Hey, there's our little friend. Hey, hey, dude. Where, where are you going? Hey, come back. Come say hi. Can I get back up here if I go in the water? Hey. Oh, yeah. He was he was literally right there waiting for me. Hey, little guy. You gonna come up? Oh well. Anyways, that was our friend, the little bone shark. And by the way, we're back in Subnautica below zero. If you haven't already digested that, now. I'm going to give you a quick heads up. I'm actually sick. I have like space aids or I caught Kara. Something happened. Something's not good. And now I'm pretty much dying. Or at least I feel like I'm dying. But I'm sure I'm going to get better in the next day or two. And I'll be fine. Yeah, okay. I'm okay, little guy. You don't need to, you don't worry about it, okay? <laughs> don't even worry about it, man. You go get me some cough medicine and I'll be perfectly fine, okay? Oh, it's like he heard me. Okay, I hope you find maybe some enzyme sample, actually. Yeah, that was, that was kind of cute. Anyways, guys, again, welcome back to Subnautica Below Zero. Let's go down through some of the patch notes for this game, because surprisingly already there was an update, be it a very, very minor update that's more so centered around little bug fixes and I guess quality of life improvements for the introduction of Subnautica Below Zero. So let's, let's just jump into this real quick. Here are the patch notes right here, and it's a micro update, actually, is what they call it. So, sorry if you were really hyped up about the whole, hey, look, we got an update already type of thing, but, I, you know, it is still an update, and they did change some things, so that's good for you guys to know, at least. And this was updated, actually, two days ago, three days ago, somewhere around there, depending on whenever I decide to publish this video, depending on even if I want to make this video, because I'm still sick. Anyways... You get the idea right here. They've actually changed some things for the intro of the game as well as changed some mechanics for creatures, which is kind of strange because I feel like they should be working on the new content more so than the stuff that already exists. For example, the Titan Holefish oxygen recharge time being up to 40 seconds. But you know what? It's their game. They can do whatever they want with it ultimately. But these are the update notes. If you want, you can pause the video right here, take a quick look. I'm not going to be going down through them too much because, well, they're not really that important to me. And the actual body of this video for me is going to be the storyline, what happens after the point we've gotten to. And I've actually got some pretty cool stuff to show you as well. Some cool stuff being this thing right here, which is monstrous as all hell. We'll get into that in a little bit, though. So now that we're back in the game, what's happened in the whole series of Subnautica Below Zero and what's been going on? Well, we already know the basic timeline, you know, we crashed on this planet, you know, yada yada, we got rescued and then we had a research team come down here because we found out about all kinds of fancy stuff from the guy before and the other Subnautica, right? I almost voice cracked. I took everything I had to not sound like a prepubescent 12 year old kid again. But anyways, you guys know the general idea of Subnautica and the storyline. And then Below Zero, obviously, we're a researcher kind of just down here finding out new things and trying to figure stuff out and figure out how life works down here. Well, in the last video, we were left with some cliffhangers right here, censored for early access. Two of these came up on separate days, and that pretty much marks the end of as far as you can really get in Subnautica Below Zero, unfortunately. And that's even further past their Act 1, just, oh, thank you for playing the early access stuff, now you gotta do your own thing right here. Uh, early access 1, and we basically got to this. So what's happened in the meantime? Well, we had to send samples of ourselves up to Walterra because, well, they wanted to know what was going on with us. Now they know we hold a secret, which is al Ann, or at least they think they know something about us. They think they know something's going on with us. And they can't really prove it yet because what well, we need to be up there for actual diagnostic testing and stuff like that. Now in the midst of all this, Jeffries, a key character, has actually gone missing and we're not sure what's going on with Jeffries. As noted, uh, around here, right here, yeah. We found Jeffries PDA, we sent it up to the Vesper space station and they analyzed it. Now, in the meantime, they actually wanted a sample of the Kara. So we went all the way down to the uh, frozen Leviathan that was cont contaminated with this Kara, and we sent a sample via the rocket up to the Vesper. All in the meantime, they finished with the look at Jeffrey's PDA and what's going on. They placed them about 50 kilometers away from where we were. And now, after all of that happened, they actually found Jeffrey's. They found him pretty far away from the original research sites. What had happened, apparently, was an ice worm attacked him, and a warper teleported him far, far away from where he originally was. Now, it doesn't make sense to me, because we all know warpers were designed to be... In, they were quarantine enforcement units or something, and basically what that means is anything infected with the Kara bacterium, 
Well, they were meant to eradicate and destroy. They were they were, they were responsible for trying to quarantine and keep the planet cured from the Quran. Unfortunately, they weren't able to, obviously, but you get the idea, okay? They were meant to do this. That's why they were created. They eradicated all sources of the Quran, and that's basically what they were supposed to do. If Jeffries wasn't contaminated, or if he wasn't infected, well, he shouldn't have, in essence, been teleported or even targeted by the warpers. Doesn't really make sense. Did these guys attack you now? Did they update that? Hey! You want your baby? Oh, I guess they didn't update. Oh my god, look at those teeth! Oh my god, that's kind of terrifying as hell. Let me throw you down. What if I pick up another one? Oh god, ow! You guys actually- Oh, they attack! Oh no, they attack! Are you done now? There, I stopped. I stopped messing with your baby. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, you poor little guy. Oh, he can't get up. There you go. Oh, that's adorable. God, I love the animation in this game, but... Okay, so back onto the storyline and where we are so far. Um, that's basically that. Jeffries claims that stuff, but I don't believe it for a second because Warpers aren't programmed to do that, and I highly doubt al -An has some form of communication outside of our body simply because he's limited by a human's brain and how unsophisticated and advanced a human's brain is. Unfortunately, we're not really the greatest harbingers for this guy to take advantage of everything, right? So, that kind of sucks. Now, we sent a bacterium sample up, as you know, and unfortunately, the rocket docked, but the sample didn't arrive at the labs. Curiously enough, right? It's something weird is happening up there. Alan continues to say, hey, she suspects you, your sister's being a dick right now, so that's basically that. And then we find out about Margaret. We find out about her, and, well, we end up following her. We end up at Margaret's main base, and, well, we actually find something there. We found an orange tablet. The orange tablet, obviously, is the tablet used on the door for the ending of the game. So that's all fine and dandy, you know, we do all that stuff, and it's obviously not scripted, None, nothing's really working per se, so, you know, you get the idea there, like, it's kind of just, eh, kind of rigged in there, if you, if, if yeah, that basically that. Regardless, it doesn't matter, because we find out after leaving and getting this tablet, or how to make it, that the reserves of en Enzyme 42 have deteriorated. Now, I'm thinking... Jeffries was sent up there, and then suddenly the Kara bacterium goes missing when we send it up, and now their Enzyme 42 samples have deteriorated. Now I imagine they have some advanced samples out there, you know, to try and handle all of the nastiness going on. You know, if there's an outbreak, well, you know they're going to want to have something that they can do with it, right? Well, unfortunately they can't anymore. Someone sabotaged their reserves. And that's the only thing I come to. And I think it was Jeffries, to be honest with you. I think Jeffries sabotaged the reserves up there and sent himself back down to the planet. Now, why do I say that? Well, because, um, actually, after the Kara sample doesn't make it and after the reserves are destroyed and we have to send up more Enzyme 42, we find out that there was an unauthorized life pod launch towards the planet. Now, I haven't found this life pod or where it would have quote-unquote landed, but that basically leaves us here, uh, where we have the censored for early access stuff. The unfortunate fact is that Jeffries may be the one behind all of this, and I've had countless comments about this as well from you guys watching the video saying, Hey, you know, Jeffries is probably the one doing the nastiness. He's doing the nasty, he's doing the do, and there's some pretty nasty stuff happening because of this. Now, we can actually progress the storyline a little bit further past what we're at right now for this sensor. Oh, you're a dick. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's right. You suck. Freaking crash fish. Why are they Why are they in this expansion? Damn it. They shouldn't be here. Yeah, like I was saying, there are ways to advance the storyline even more. But unfortunately, it's it's really broken just in development stuff where it's it's just barely working and barely functioning there's no cinematics and like all the items are placeholders like let me show you if i go down here to the crystal cache spoilers i detect my people's technology nearby um and we go down here all the way down here i don't even think there's a genuine way to get down here without using cheats at this point because i don't know if the cave systems are all connected um but if i turn this off 
Yeah, like you got to go way, way, way down here. Um, okay, so let's use this for an example. If I go right here. Oh, that didn't sound healthy. At the fabricator base, actually. Um, there's actually some precursor stuff right here. And we find out that oh, this is where we'll construct a vessel for Al N. Now, it doesn't look like much right now. Our freedom, are you not an enemy of your people now? Selective disinformation, you know, yada, yada, you know, all that fanciness and political crap that I don't want to be a part of. But this is the fabricator base. Now, this is one of the key areas, but nothing really happens other than some text dialogue. And all of these places really don't have much going on except for a little bit of dialogue. And it's like, it's really hard to genuinely get down to these places without using some form of cheat or using something to your advantage so you can make it down here. So, you know, I entirely understand when it comes to that, but these are very broken sections. Now, the fabricator base, where we will make al -An's body, I believe once this is completely done and it's been constructed and the developers are like, hey, we can put this in the game now, I think it's going to look like this. I think this is what we're going to use to create the body for al -An, or the al -Mac, whatever you want to call him. Now. The reason behind this, obviously, is this is a very advanced, you're making an actual vessel, like a biomechanical vessel for this guy. He needs he needs a body, more or less, because he doesn't have one right now. So I think that this precursor tech, this giant precursor fabricator, will be the key to both setting him free and setting ourselves free and getting away from Altera, because, well, that's basically that. Now, like I said, it, it is still super early broken stuff, and with that obviously comes some issues of getting down to areas two, and I'm not messing around with that right now. All I can tell you is that we need to get body parts, and the body parts are very, very broken right now. But from what I've seen past that point, there isn't really a way for me to progress unless there is, and you guys can let me know how I can progress it, but you know, the storyline and how it works just don't seem to be there for the moment to progress even further. I'm just going to give you guys some major spoiler warnings right now, okay? All right, so that, that's your warning right there. Um, so we're actually around this section right here. Uh, we have a problem up here. All reserved enzyme 42 deteriorated, yada, yada. Um, this stuff right here happens. Uh, Act 4, after sending up the enzyme, we're, sending, or we're, we're running some scans of this shield, but the CEO is still furious, yada, yada. Um, so basically stuff that's already happened to some degree. We find out that the CEO is furious and it's unlikely the mercenaries are going to bring anyone in alive if they find out who's been doing this horrible stuff. Now we have a bunch of censored for early access stuff right here. Uh, Jeffries to Robin, we have Sam Robin Showdown, which is also censored for early access. So there's some kind of showdown between the sisters, obviously. Uh, Alan also has something to say in there, and all of the items are also uh, censored for early access. Now, in these files, they talk about a white tablet. I don't know why it's called a white tablet when we get the orange tablet, and it's recognized as the orange tablet, I believe, with Margaret. But, you know, regardless, um, Robin Goodall, please insert the tablet. Once you do, we cannot turn back. Um, and then the ending cutscene, it's a secret, and then epilogue, the end so on and so forth and that's basically that we we're basically at the end of the game if we had done everything legitimately it would have taken us roughly 10 20 hours ish if we really pushed the boundaries of what the game has to offer but right now as it stands oh wait what's this bud you put in my bed i'll never forgive you uh i was seven and it's slime coming out of three different holes my hair smelled like guts for a week um, it was endangered. Why don't you just admit you wanted to slime me? Uh, I was preserving alien life. I'm on to you. Okay, so I've never had that one pop up actually. That was kind of weird. I don't know why that happened. But anyways, you guys get the general idea of it. This would basically be where we're nearing the ending of the game and finding out all of those fancy secrets. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create... A tablet I know it was a long it was a long spiel to get to this point but I'm gonna create the tablet that we need to use to open the gateway or the door uh, found over right there at sanctuary now once I do that 
and we figure out what's going to happen there, all the stuff that's going to happen. So what I've done is I've actually made the orange tablet right here that we can use. I'm going to go back to the sanctuary right there, and we're going to try and trigger the ending of Subnautica Below Zero. Unfortunately, it may be censored, so we might not get that far, but regardless, I'm going to try and do that. Okay, here we go. Let's just go ahead and see if this does anything. All right. And cutscene. It's a secret. So we enter this facility here. Cutscene is supposed to play. Don't care about my fluid. And then this door is still blocking us. If I use unlock doors, because I would imagine this would open as well, unless something happens in here and we need to do something. But if I, use, if I use that, we actually have an elevator that leads us up. We just switch it to day. Oh, it's already day. Okay, it's just really dark in here. We have an alien elevator that brings us up. I assume it's going to bring us up. Okay, are we going to bring us up? But unfortunately, we don't get to see the cutscene, which kind of sucks. But the cutscene's probably not even made yet, to be honest with you. I mean, this is the very ending of the game. Uh, and then we end up at the top of this place. Now, everything that you see here at this point is not representative of the final product of the game. Um, just to be clear with you, I think like there's a section down here. We have a door. Uh, this leads down here to an opening that lets you go outside of this place. Uh, and that's pretty much that. There's nothing really up here. I don't see anyways. Yeah, there's nothing at all past that point so i'm gonna free cam back in oh boy i'm falling that didn't tickle kind of curious to see what would happen if i bring the hover bike onto this little pad thing right here doesn't do anything but if i get off i instantly get thrown up all right that's cool so that was cool and all but this is more or less the ending content and what's there so far we tried using the tablet unfortunately the tablet really didn't have much to what what? <laughs> what? It's not. It works going up, but it doesn't work going back down. How are we not supposed to go back down that elevator once we go up there? So they just didn't care. <laughs> okay. Uh, you get the idea, guys. I'm going to move out of the game now. I'm going to move into some other stuff because, well, there's not really much left for us to do here. So, yeah. This is what I showed you earlier in the video. This is actually a sculpt of the Shadow Leviathan. Granted, it looks more like a sculpt of the Dilo looking one than anything else. And also, this is fan made, just so you know. This isn't the official model. But I had a couple of DMs on Discord about it. People thought it was cool. And I knew about this a while ago, too. But I was just like, well, I don't really want to show this right now, you know, because we might get the Shadow Leviathan super soon. And, well, that's basically that. But it doesn't look like we're going to be getting the Shadow Leviathan anytime soon for the meanwhile. So uh, it doesn't really hurt to show you guys an idea of what it may look like once it's coming to the game. Granted, this may also be an atrocity and nothing like how it should look. And I actually don't believe this is the model of it that they're going to be going with in general. This looks more like a Dilo looking iteration that was created a while ago. And in, I, I don't think this is the one that's going to be coming to the game. I really don't think this is the copy of the version that'll be going into the game once they actually finish the modeling over at Fox 3D. Regardless, I think that the bioluminescence is pretty cool. I like that it has the glowing red dots there because usually when we see these little spears, they're blue glowing or... You know, there's a different glow. We never see the red glowing dots or anything like that on any of the creatures for bioluminescence. So I kind of like that idea. I also like how the mouth is glowing with the blue and the eyes are glowing as well. But it doesn't really make sense functionally to have its eyes glow or its teeth glow. Unless that's just a after effect of rendering it out and putting it on the site. Or maybe just an effect they had to highlight some of the key features of this creature. Regardless, I want to know you guys, I want to know what you think down below in the comments section below. Let me know if you have any thoughts or feelings or any changes that happened to this. I was also getting some messages about this model right here and this creature in general. Now, I need to burst some bubbles here and I'm sure the majority of you are looking at this right now face palm me like, oh no, he's saying it's going to be in below zero. Oh no. Well, no, I'm not going to say that right now. This is actually the gargantuan leviathan, the biggest known living leviathan that was ever on planet 4546b. Now, funny enough, this was actually modeled a very long time ago, and I think it was inspired by the artwork that I had a creator called Tapwing make um, for the community. It was a community project, you know, kind of expensive, but 
Uh, we wanted to see what the skeletal remains would look like if it was alive, and well, we basically came up with the conclusion that this is what it would look like. Yada yada, you know, it would be an amazingly huge, gigantic creature, you know, move on from there. And then someone actually went out of their way to 3D model some of this as well. I don't think this is being worked on currently. I don't think anything is going to happen with this model, unfortunately. But it's still pretty cool to see and uh, hopefully offers some clarification. Not coming to Subnautica Below Zero. And in closing, the last thing I wanted to show you guys is this right here. The Peeper Leviathan, which I thought was adorably horrifying, unfortunately. So, Charlie, uh, the main guy behind Subnautica Below Zero, actually tweeted this out. And I thought it was kind of cool that he did this because I love it when developers... You know, take a moment and appreciate the fan art and, you know, what people that are fans of the games have to say and want to show. So, I thought this was kind of cool. I don't think it'll ever be a thing in Subnautica Below Zero, unfortunately, but it's terrifying as all hell to see something like this as well. That's It's a familiar face with bigger teeth, a bigger body, and just scary as all hell. But I like it. I think it was really cool. But guys, that is it for now on Subnautica Below Zero. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section as well. I wanna, I kind of, I'm kind of curious because the Shadow Leviathan and the Ice Worm um, are two hot topics. We currently have a preview of the Ice Worm. Actually, I think I have one slithering around here right now. Oh, there it is. Hey, big guy. How you doing? So yeah, I'm kind of curious. Wow, he really jumped far. I'm kind of curious to know what would win in a fight, a Shadow Leviathan or an Ice Worm Leviathan. I'm kind of curious about that. Also, I tried using the heating gel and it but it broke my game basically. Now I can't I can't really do anything. So that kind of sucks. But guys, that is it for now on Subnautica Below Zero. I hope I clarified some of the story for you guys and what's going to be happening at the ending of the game potentially. Potentially. Okay. Yeah, you, you do your own thing. Uh, what's going to be happening at the ending of the game? I assume we're going to make the body for Alan, and he's probably not going to double-cross us. I don't think he's really into that kind of thing, but I feel like there's going to be some kind of climactic ending between Jeffries and Margaret. I think that's going to be a thing for sure. Um, you guys let me know what you think down below in the comments section, though. Give me your theories as well and everything that you think is going to be happening, but that's it for me, and I'm going to try and go get better now because I'm, I'm dying. <laughs> Alright guys, I'll see you in the next video.